Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah the Brick. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Sakhir Air Base the President of the Republic of Chechnya, Ramzan Ahmad Kadyrov, and the accompanying delegation upon their visit to the Kingdom of Bahrain. His Majesty the King welcomed the President and reviewed with him the course of relations and cooperation and ways of enhancing them in various fields to serve common goals and interests. The Chechnyan President expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for the warm welcome and His Majesty's efforts in developing the foundations of joint coordination between the two countries. His Majesty hailed the successful result of the Chechnyan President's visit to the Kingdom last year and his keenness to bolster bilateral relations in all levels hailing his efforts in developing his country to serve the aspirations of his people. For his part, the Chechnyan president affirmed his country's keenness on consolidating its relations with the kingdom in various aspects of cooperation, noting Bahrain's comprehensive development under the leadership of His Majesty. He hailed the success of the Bahrain International Air Show, highlighting the important investment and commercial opportunities it provides through hosting an elite of companies and professionals in the aviation sector, wishing the Bahraini people further success. The meeting also discussed a number of regional and international affairs, an exchange of views on a number of topics of mutual interest. His Majesty the King hosted a lunch banquet in honor of the President of Chechnya and the accompanying delegation. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, accompanied by the President of Chechnya, Ramadan Ahmed Kadyrov, toured the Bahrain International Air Show 2018 in its fifth edition, which started yesterday at Sakhir Air Base. They visited the UAE Pavilion on the Council of the Balance of Economic Cooperation and was briefed about the responsibilities and duties of the Council. They also visited the Russian Pavilion and saw the Russian aircrafts and were briefed about the features of the aircraft. His Majesty then visited the Saudi Company for Military Industries and a number of U.S. companies where the officials in these pavilions talked about the role of their companies in military and civil fields. His Majesty witnessed the air show of the participating countries where the show started with a Bahrain Royal Air Force show. His Majesty praised the continuous success of the air show and hailed the wide international participation and international companies in the military and civil fields. He expressed thanks and appreciation to the BDF and the Bahraini Royal Air Force for ensuring the success of this event and also praised their role in organizing coordination and participation in the air show which reflects their high capabilities. His Majesty wished everyone success in their future participation.
His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, held a telephone call with the United States Secretary of State, Michael Pompeo. During the call, His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and the Secretary of State reviewed the long-standing relations and extensive collaboration between Bahrain and the United States, as well as discussing the latest international and regional developments. Her Royal Highness, wife of His Majesty the King, President of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, delivered a speech uh, signaling uh, the beginning of the International Conference on the Role of Women's Political Participation in Achieving Developmental Justice, that's being organized by the Supreme Council for Women, held under the patronage of Her Royal Highness. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحضور الكريم يأتي موضوع المؤتمر الذي نسعد اليوم باستضافته بمشاركة دولية رفيعة المستوى في توقيت منسجم مع ما تشهده مملكة البحرين من استعدادات للانتخابات التشريعية والبلدية التي ستعلن نتائجها الأولية بعد عشرة أيام ونشهد للمرأة البحرينية إقبالا متزايدا فيها ومنسجما مع مرور أكثر من ستة عشر عام منذ استكمالها لحقوقها السياسية التي بدأت بعض مظاهرها في بداية الثلاثينات من القرن الماضي حين منحت حق التصويت في الانتخابات البلدية حين ذاك ولعلي لازلت أتذكر وباعتزاز كبير تلك الحوارات واللقاءات الكثيرة التي جمعتنا بنساء البحرين في مختلف مناطقها تحضيرا لانتخابات 2002 وما حملنا من أمل وتطلع وحماسة تحضيرا لمرحلة عمل جديدة تمارس فيها حقوقها كمواطن كامل الأهلية وجدير بالشراكة في التنمية الوطنية ولقد شهدت مسيرتنا الوطنية حضورا نسائيا مبكرا نفخر به ونؤكد على مساهمته في تشكيل الهوية البحرينية المعروفة بتقديرها للعلم والمعرفة واحتراما لقيم العمل وحرصها على التعايش السلمي والتزامها بالمبادئ والقيم الإنسانية لعالم حر وآمن سيدات والسادة بالرغم من الجهود الكبيرة التي تبذل على المستوى الدولي لرفع مستويات مشاركة المرأة في الحياة السياسية على مدى السنوات الماضية إلا أن الأرقام والإحصائيات المعبرة عن مشاركة المرأة وتمثيلها لمجتمعها تمثيلا مناسبا في المناصب والمواقع السياسية لا زالت غير متسقة مع حجم تلك الجهود ولا مع ما تحققه المرأة على الصعيد التنموي المحلي خصوصا إذا أخذنا في الاعتبار حجم ما يتم استثماره لرفع تنافسية المرأة كجزء لا يتجزأ من قوة العمل الوطنية إن أردنا منطودا منطقيا لذلك الاستثمار وهو ما يجعلنا نتوقف قليلا لتقييم جهودنا وللبحث عن فرص تحسين جديدة للبناء على ما تم إنجازه واسمحوا لي بهذه المناسبة أن أطرح عددا من التساؤلات والخواطر التي أتطلع إلى أن يكون هذا المؤتمر خير فرصة للإجابة عليها أولا هل تمكنت الجهود العالمية من تقليص الفجوة بين النصوص الدستورية والقانونية التي رسخت حقوق المرأة السياسية وبين الثقافات والأعراف لتمارس تلك الحقوق بشكل واقعي وصولا لعدالة 
التمتع بالفرص والإسهام المؤثر في استدامة التنمية والتنافسية إلى أي مدى نجحت التنشئة الأسرية والمناهج التعليمية وبرامج مؤسسات المجتمع المدني والجمعيات والأحزاب السياسية والرسائل الإعلامية ومنابر الفكر والرأي في تطوير القناعات المجتمعية وبناء الثقافة السياسية المساندة لمشاركة المرأة بصورة طبيعية وسلسة في مواقع صنع القرار ثالثاً لماذا تحولت التدابير المؤقتة التي اتخذتها العديد من الدول كوسيلة لحصول المرأة على التمثيل المناسب على الصعيد السياسي إلى تدابير دائمة أليس في ذلك مصادرة لخيار الناخب وإخلال بقاعدة إتاحة الفرصة المتساوية في المشاركة السياسية رابعاً هل وصول المرأة للمجالس التمثيلية مرتبط فقط بخدمة قضايا المرأة والأسرة أم قضايا المجتمع ككل وكيف نضمن التوازن لدى المرأة والرجل على حد سواء في تبني تلك القضايا ضمن مساعيهم في تمثيل ناخبيهم وأخيرا لماذا يتم التركيز على شكل واحد من أشكال المشاركة السياسية عند الحديث عن مساهمة المرأة وهو وصولها لموقع سياسي وإهمال غيرها من المساهمات كتدرجها في المناصب القيادية في مجالات العمل الأخرى أو حتى ممارستها لحقها السياسي كناخبة الحضور الكريم لقد كان المجلس الأعلى المرأة جهودا متواصلة في مجال رسم السياسة العامة واستكمال الأطر التشريعية ومتابعة تنفيذ الخطط النوعية التي تهدف إلى تحقيق التوازن بين الجنسين على الصعيد الوطني كما كان للإرادة السياسية دور كبير في تبني مؤسسات الدولة لبرامج عمل المجلس الذي وضع توجهات خطة وطنية شاملة استطاعت أن تسهم في انتقال مملكة البحرين من مرحلة اتسمت بالتركيز على تمكين المرأة ورعايتها وتأهيلها إلى مرحلة تكون المرأة فيها من يساهم ويبادر بتمكين ذاتها وصناعة قراراتها لتصل اليوم إلى مرحلة أكثر تقدما تساهم المرأة بدورها في تمكين مجتمعها والارتقاء به ويحدون الفخر بأن نتمكن في المجلس وخلال أقل من عشرة أعوام من الانتهاء من وضع نموذج وطني يعمل على حوكمة تطبيقات ادماج احتياجات المرأة في التنمية وتحقيق التوازن بين الجنسين تتشارك في تفعيل كافة سلطات ومؤسسات الدولة الرسمية والخاصة والأهلية ووصولا لذلك قمنا بإدارة فريق عمل وطني تم تشكيله بأمر ملكي بمتابعة الخطط الكفيلة الكفيلة باستكمال السياسات والتشريعات المراعية لتكافؤ الفرص بين الجنسين واحتياجات المرأة وتضمين الخطة الوطنية لتقدم المرأة البحرينية في برامج العمل الحكومي تهيئة البنية التحتية من آليات وأدوات عملية لمتابعة تطبيقات تكافؤ الفرص إعداد وتفعيل الموازنات المستجيبة لاحتياجات المرأة لقياس عدالة الإنفاق وقلق الفجوات وبناء إدارة إدارة المعرفة لضمان لضمان سلاسة التنفيذ والمتابعة والرقابة والتقييم وسيعمل هذا النظام المتكامل على قياس تقدم المرأة في الاقتصاد الوطني على المستوى المؤسسي والخدمي ومن أهم منهجياته وآلياته التقييم الذاتي من قبل المؤسسات لقياس أدائها في تطبيق السياسات وبرامج التوازن بين الجنسين ويعرض بكل شفافية في تقرير وطني تتبناه حكومة مملكة البحرين 
وإنشاء مرصد شامل لمؤشرات وبيانات التوازن بين الجنسين يعمل على رصد وتحليل موقع المرأة وقياس معدلات تنافسيتها محليا ودوليا ووضع القرارات المستقبلية المتوقعة لتطوير سياسات تقدم المرأة ونأمل عبر تفعيل هذا النظام أن تكون مملكة البحرين من بين الدول التي تمكنت من تضمين احتياجات المرأة في المسار التنموي العام وأن تتحول مسألة متابعة تقدم المرأة إلى مسؤولية مشتركة وقائمة على نظام مؤسسي يرتبط أدائه بمؤشرات ترصد الفجوات وحلول تعمل على سد الخلل وسنحرص من خلال تشاورنا وتواصلنا المستمر مع المنظمات الأممية والآليات المماثلة في الدول الصديقة أن نروج لمخرجات هذه التجربة بعد تفعيلها بوقت كاف على قرار تجربتنا في تطوير جائزة وطنية تهدف إلى تشجيع مؤسسات العمل على تقدم المرأة واستدامة عطائها ويسعدنا أن نجد الصدى الطيب لهذه التجربة التي تبنتها هيئة الأمم المتحدة للمرأة مشكورة حيث عملنا معا بشكل وثيق وبمشاركة قيمة لأعضاء لجنة تحكيم الجائزة على تحديد معاييرها بدقة وموضوعية وبما يتيح للمشاركين فيها فرصة الترويج والتعريف بما يقومون به من جهود لتقدم المرأة ويعزز من دورها في النهوض بمجتمعها ولنتمكن بدورنا من الاحتفاء بتلك المبادرات المتميزة وفي الختام أشكركم على حسن استماعكم وحرصكم على مشاركتنا أعمال هذا المؤتمر مع تمنياتنا لمداولاته كل التوفيق لوضع حلول مبتكرة وفاعلة للمضي قدما بجهودنا المشتركة من أجل مشاركة أرحب للمرأة وبما يتسق مع مكانتها الرفيعة ودورها المؤثر في تحقيق الاستقرار والرخاء في دول العالم أجمع والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته In a welcoming speech during the opening of the conference, the Secretary General of the Supreme Council for Women, Hala Al Ansari, underlined the importance of the conference in terms of its subject and timing for the Kingdom of Bahrain, in connection with two national events, namely the holding of parliamentary and municipal elections and the occasion of Bahrain Women's Day, Women in the Legislative Sphere, and Municipal Work. UN Secretary General and Executive Director of the United Nations Women's Authority, Dr. Fomzili Malambo, Nukuka said that we are in an era where the female graduates of girls' universities are rising and the Kingdom of Bahrain is at the forefront of countries where female college graduates outnumber girls. The stressed, she stressed uh, the need for mechanisms to ensure that men and women are always present in all decision-making structures, expressing confidence that this conference uh, will uh, produce ideas and recommendations on how women's leadership issues can be addressed for development everywhere in the world. The opening of the conference witnessed an interactive session with former New Zealand Prime Minister Helen Elizabeth Clark, during which she talked about the challenges she faced in entering the parliament of the country and for 27 years as a leader of the opposition and then as Prime Minister as well as her experience in running for the post of Secretary General of the United Nations. Clark said she is visiting Bahrain for the fifth time and was closely monitoring the rapid progress made by Bahraini women in various fields. She expressed belief that in order for a woman to take on any job or position, she must be the best person to do so, not because she was a woman. For her part, Chairman of the Federal National Council of the United Arab Emirates, Dr. Amal Abdullah al qbaisi said that the conference is a confirmation of Her His Majesty the King's efforts to empower Bahraini women. 
Al Qubaisi expressed uh, his sincere thanks and appreciation to the Supreme Council for Women, headed uh, by Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, the wife of His Majesty the King, for her achievements of the Bahraini and Arab women. In his uh, turn, the President of the Arab Parliament, a member of the Saudi Shura Council, Dr. Mish'al Al Islami, affirmed that uh, Bahrain's membership in the Human Rights Council reaffirms the respect of the international community for Bahrain's development in the field of human rights, especially the rights of women. The Kingdom of Bahrain in this regard. Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa also attended the first session of the conference under the theme Women in Decision Making and National Competitiveness, various experiments around the world in the field of empowering women and raising the participation in public and political life. At the meeting, which was shared by Ambassador Gera Ledeen Byrne, a permanent representative of Ireland and current chairperson of the UN Commission on the Status of Women, the speaker stressed the Kingdom of Bahrain does not need to take special measures to ensure that Bahraini women are represented presented in senior positions and decision-making structures because of the political will of His Majesty the King and His Majesty's belief in the need to support women, in addition to programs, plans and initiatives to support Bahraini women by the Supreme Council for Women under the chairmanship of Her Royal Highness the King's wife. These speakers praise Bahrain's progress in the area of supporting women and the great achievements they make reviewing the experiences of their countries and the political achievements of women. The fourth international conference on the role of women's political participation in achieving development, justice, practical experiments and aspirations was held today. The conference is part of the work program of the Supreme Council for Women to activate the theme of Bahraini Women Day to celebrate women's contributions both in the municipal and legislative fields. The purpose, I think, first of all, is to raise awareness of a very important issue women's uh, participation in society. It is important that we are aware of uh, what uh, women can bring to the table when they are empowered economically, politically and socially. So I think that's the primary purpose of this meeting. And then I think that the other objective is to see how to go about empowering women in these various areas. The conference gathers a wide international participation to review the progress made regarding women's participation in the political field. Well, this is an extremely important event. I'm here because I'm Ireland's ambassador to the United Nations, but more importantly, I'm the chair on the Commission of the Status of Women at the United Nations. This conference contributes directly to the work that we are doing at the United Nations to look at how we can improve women's participation, of course, in the political and legislative system, but also in terms of empowering women and freeing them up to actively contribute to their own societies. The conference will also discuss ways of the sustainability of women's participation and its impact on the country's competitiveness and its abilities to achieve high levels of development. We, women are 50% of the global population, so uh, as we say, it's a bit of a no-brainer that women's voices really should be reflected. The representation of women in parliaments has been shown to improve peace processes, it improves education, health care, particularly women's attention to their own families is translated into better legislative efforts on education. So right across the globe it makes good business sense for a parliament to have women's voices represented. In Bahrain I think you know, women are contributing a lot to the uh, social development of this uh, friendly country. And in fact, they are, well, I'm Japanese ambassador, and uh, you know, uh, serving in Bahrain, I think there are a couple of things we have to learn. I mean, Japanese people should learn from uh, Bahrain. One of the things is, you know, women are very much, you know, strongly contributing to the society. This is more uh, than uh, uh, what is happening in Japan. For example, even in the case of uh, percentage of women working uh, in the government, you know, so on and so forth, uh, that is more than Japan. So this is one of the things we have to learn from, uh, from Bahrain. The Kingdom of Bahrain has taken advancement steps in the field of women's empowerment, developing women's capabilities and further enabling their participation in the society. Reporting for Bahrain International, I am Hamad Youssef. 
Trade has always been an important aspect of the Bahrain International Air Show and has contributed greatly to the aviation sector. Shoghan Mohammed shares some of the trade highlights with us in this report. The second day of the 2018 Bahrain International Air Show saw companies and delegates from the global aviation industry flock to Bahrain. From conferences and announcements to flight displays, the show has something for everyone. Both old and new participants were thrilled to be a part of the show to showcase their latest achievements and commodities. We're happy that the air show took the same model that it had in the past, which is becoming more focused on the business to business side, which is totally different to what happens in other air shows. The timing was fantastic because it gave us a fantastic twinning between Dubai and Bahrain. And the third thing is that our company relates to a lot of different niche uh, services that we offer airlines, as well as the uh, private uh, aircraft and private aviation businesses. These things coupled together made this air show really, really successful for us. Alhamdulillah, it's been quite a busy air show. We've done a lot of uh, signings. We've done signings with American companies that are going to be doing business here, European companies that are going to be do doing business here. We're also developing our platform, a very niche, unique platform on the aviation side that is going to be providing services into Saudi Arabia, into the UAE and other areas in the region. Obviously this is home for us here in Bahrain, so it's a great opportunity to show off our services to the, to the world. Um, we also find the Bahrain Air Show as uh, a unique air show where it's a little bit uh, more intimate. Um, we're able to meet with the people that we need to meet. Some of the other air shows are very large and Bahrain is excellent air show to, to get those meetings and meet the people that we, we need to meet with. Bahrain is very important for us, first of all. Uh, because of the catchment area, because of the uh, actually the location of the Bahrain, Bahrain is the door uh, of the Gulf region for the Turkish aerospace industries, and we have a good collaboration between the uh, Royal Bahraini Air Forces, uh, Bahrain Defence Forces, and the other related governmental agencies also as well. Here in Bahrain, uh, we have lots of uh, users: uh, Bahrain Defence Forces, Bahrain National Guard, Ministry of Defence. Uh, and uh, they use our armored vehicles for long. Actually, uh, we are very proud to be in Bahrain and uh, for more than now 15 years, we are serving all Bahrain users. This show has been extremely uh, positive for us in the past. Previously, we have only bought um, aircraft and we've had them on static display. And now this year, we have this, this large pavilion and a very large team supporting us here. And the reason we're doing that is because the show has been successful for us in the past. And so far this year, it has again been a blockbuster event for us. With a 70% increase in exhibitors, the whole hangar of the Sghir Air Base is covered, bringing about an exciting atmosphere and generating a lot of trade deals. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Shoukh Mohammed. The Bahrain International Air Show's fabulous air displays continue today at Sakhir Air Base. More details in this report with Sarah Abul Fatih. The Bahrain International Air Show is one of the fastest growing shows in the region and also a playground for the popular aerobatic teams to display their enthralling maneuvers. This year's show is witnessing aerobatic displays from teams from the UAE, Russia and Italy, among others. In fact, the opening day saw all the aerobatic teams woo the crowds with a spectacle of flying expertise. The Russian Knights were joined by UAE's El Forsan display team as well as Italy's Freca tricolor for the display. He is beginning to accomplish uh, the display program at the uh, international exhibition and uh, this is my first international display. The Global Stars acrobatic team, the Black Falcons parachute team, a paramotor solo display, Mark Jeffries little and large display in addition to flying displays by the Royal Bahraini Air Force, the UAE Air Force and the US Department of Defense all participated in this year's show. What's special about it, you asked? The special thing is we've got fireworks on the aircraft. So uh, 10 minutes after the sun has gone over the horizon, we uh, fly and we've got all these big sparks coming off the wings of the aeroplane. That's quite special. The visitors to the show will also get to see the largest lineup of aircraft at this edition, with totaling approximately 110 aircrafts on display. 
The Royal Bahraini Air Force has participated with their military training and transport aircraft. We have received our first Charlie 130 for, to participate and be displayed in Bahrain International Air Show 2018. Visitors and participants of Bahrain International Air Show 2018 were very pleased with the air displays this year and expressed their utmost admiration of the pilot's skills. And I'm surprised how many different types of displays and how good they were. Very thrilling no matter if you're a civil aviation fan or military aviation, they've got everything. Whether you're an aircraft enthusiast or just a casual visitor, you cannot fail to be impressed by the skills of the pilots displaying their thrilling maneuvers. Reporting for Bahrain Television, this is Sara Bulfet. The 2018 air show also highlighted developments for the Bahrain space sector as the responsible minister for the National Space Science Agency, the NSSA, the Minister of Transportation and Telecommunications, signed an MOU with the UAE Space Agency and Khalifa University that would see the organizations working together on a two-year study program to develop nanosatellites. We are going to sign an MOU uh, between NSSA, the National Space Science Agency, and UAE Space Agency. Uh, this MOU is going to open new doors for uh, the NSSA to train our um, space, Bahrain space team to uh, build the capacity, the national capacity in the field of uh, space and space technology. And this training will be uh, uh, done in, uh, in the United Arab Emirates uh, over the next two years and it will end inshallah uh, by uh, building the first Bahrain Cube satellite. We are uh, very happy and uh, proud that we signed uh, the second space cooperation agreement with Bahrain. Uh, the first one was, uh, was um, uh, overarching uh, space cooperation agreements. Today we are uh, utilizing that and we are activating the first um, uh, agreements. Today we signed uh, training and uh, satellite cooperation. There were UAE and Bahrain with team together uh, through uh, their engineers uh, to study and to develop a small satellite. It's educational satellite, but I think it's very significant uh, for uh, both UAE and Bahrain. And I would like to congratulate uh, Bahrain on taking this very uh, strategic uh, steps towards uh, establishing a sustainable space program. The Kingdom of Bahrain's national carrier Gulf Air and SMVC Aviation Capital, one of the world's largest aircraft leasing companies today, announced a six-aircraft agreement for the purchase and leaseback of six Airbus A320 new aircrafts. This is SMBC Aviation Capital's first deal with Gulf Air and follows a competitive tender process. Delivery of Gulf Air's Airbus A320neo aircraft commenced from August 2018. The airline currently serves all its destinations with a combination wide and narrow body fleet and has ordered for 39 new Boeing and Airbus aircrafts, with delivery having commenced in early 2018. Gulf Air's incoming fleet will see, by end of 2018, the arrival of five Boeing 787 Dreamliners, in addition to one Airbus A3, A320neo aircraft. Alongside this, in 2018, the airline continued to enhance its product and serve, offering launched, the offering launched six new destinations and expanded its network to serve 47 cities in 26 countries. This is, of course, our, con our contribution to the success of the show, but this is also a result of our hard work and, uh, and bringing our, our business goals uh, uh, realized. We are following our strategy very thoroughly, and this is the beginning of renewal of the fleet. So this is our, one of our strategic, most strategic goals, is to be best in class, and the new aircrafts will definitely allow us to achieve that goal. Signing of the contract with the SMBC leasing company, who will finance uh, first of our six uh, Air320 fleet, uh, 320 neo So, and uh, but uh, all overall, we already this year start with renewing our fleet program. So we already have a four Dreamliner 787-9. Uh, then we received first uh, 320 neo and five from this batch is more to come next year. 
The representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the first Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, President of Bahrain Athletics Association, and His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa received on today the Chechenian Republic President Ramzan Ahmadovich Kadyrov upon arriving at Bahrain International Airport. President Kadyrov was accorded a former ceremony marking his official visit where he exchanged warm talks with His Highness Sheikh Nasser and His Highness Sheikh Khalid on bilateral ties. His Highness Sheikh Nasser extended to President Kadyrov the greetings and appreciation of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and his wishes to his country of further success and prosperity across all fields. His Highness Sheikh Nasser underscored that Bahrain is keen to construct solid and strong relations with various countries, among which the Chechen Republic, noting the importance of maintaining the strong bonds between the two friendly countries. He pointed out that the links between both countries are based on communication, mutual respect and trust. His Highness Sheikh Nasser praised the role of the Chechen President in bolstering ties with Bahrain in various areas, as well as his keenness to build active relations based on friendship and common interests. He also applauded the comprehensive development witnessed by the Chechnya Republic in various fields, wishing it and its friendly people further progress and prosperity. First Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Honorary President of the Bahrain Mixed Martial Arts Federation, Chairman of the High Organizing Committee of Brave International Combat Week, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, yesterday attended the World Mixed Martial Arts Championship, the largest MMA sports festival in Asia held in Bahrain. The championship is held under the patronage of the representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and organized by BMMAF in partnership with International Mixed Martial Arts Federation and Brave Combat Federation. His Highness Sheikh Khalid supported the fighters of the national MMA team. His presence played a prominent role in their high level performance, producing positive results that qualified them for the second round. Yesterday's matches were marked by excitement among the fighters of different countries who presented great and outstanding standards and a clear diversity diversity in the combat and technical plans. His Highness noted that Bahrain has the confidence of the international federations to organize their major events and its land on its land and the World Mixed Martial Arts Championship is a good example as the kingdom hosted the event for two successive years based on the desire of the international federation of the game. His Highness pointed out that the championship is among the most important tournaments hosted by the kingdom in the current period which has placed Bahrain in the attention of international media and highlighted its achievements especially in the sports fields.
The President of the Royal Equestrian and Endurance Federation and President of the Supreme Council for Environment, Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa, received the International Equestrian Federation President Ingmar Divos to attend the International Federation General Assembly meeting hosted in the Kingdom of Bahrain for the first time with a wide international participation. Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid conveyed to his guests the greetings of the personal representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, and Chairman of Bahrain Olympic. Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and affirmed the keenness of Bahrain to ensure the success of this meeting. He praised the participation's steps for the meeting, thanks to the directives of His Highness Sheikh Nasser to enhance the progress of the Federation's strategies. Sheikh Faisal bin Rajid expressed hope that this meeting will put the development process forward, especially regarding the topics on the General Assembly's agenda. Ingmar Divas expressed thanks and appreciation for the Kingdom's hosting of this meeting and praised the vital role of Bahrain in the success of the Federation's strategies. He praised the support of His Highness Sheikh Nasser, which helps with the success of the International Federation's activities. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, attended today the first session of the World Tolerance Summit held in Dubai under the patronage of the Vice President and Prime Minister of the United Arab Emirates and ruler of the Emirate of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. The summit is organized by the International Institute for Tolerance, part of the Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum Global Initiative, under the theme of Prospering from Pluralism, Embracing Diversity Through Innovation and Collaboration. Government representatives, decision makers and intellectual leaders from the world participated in the summit to discuss dealing with diversity in societies and affirm the values of tolerance and peace. The minister expressed appreciation to the Minister of Tolerance of the United Arab Emirates and Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the International Institute for Tolerance, Sheikh Nahyan bin Mbarak Al Nahyan, for the invitation to participate in this summit, which reflects the role of the UAE in promoting the concept of peace among countries and highlights its keenness to strengthen understanding among all people of the world in order to achieve progress and prosperity. He added that his participation comes in line with the Kingdom's historic approach that focused on tolerance and openness and coexistence. It also reflects the Kingdom's role and initiatives that promote such values. He highlighted the efforts of the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence in this regard. He also noted that the summit is one of the most important international events that aim at reinforcing joint cooperation and coordination, as well as combating terrorism and extremism. The minister wished the organizers of the summit success in achieving its objectives, which included supporting dialogue among civilizations and communication among different cultures and religions. He also wished the UAE continued development. The Kingdom of Bahrain strongly reiterates its supportive stance towards the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and all the measures it takes regarding the cause or the case of the late citizen Jamal Khashoggi, which were stated by the Minister of Foreign Affairs and the Public Prosecutor of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The Kingdom affirms that these steps reflect the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia's keenness to hold accountable and punish all those involved in this case and its full commitment to achieve justice with integrity and transparency. The Kingdom of Bahrain stresses its uh, categorical rejection of all attempts to politicize or exploit this case with the aim of harming the interests of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and violating its sovereignty, security and stability, as well as the attempts to divide uh, the Islamic nation. The Kingdom affirms that the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is the foundation of regional and international stability and peace and highlights its vital and strategic role in achieving sustainable development, prosperity and stability to all the people of the region and the world. A graduation ceremony was held for the Ministry of Education's employees participating in the training program carried out in cooperation with the Arab Bureau of Education for the Gulf State in the presence of the Minister of Education, Dr. Majid bin Ali Naimi, and the Director General of the Arab Bureau of Education for the Gulf States, Dr. Ali bin Abdul Khaliq Al Grani. The Minister of Education praised the fruitful cooperation of the Arab Bureau of Education, which comes under the Ministry's efforts to enhance the programs of the employee training process and promote promote the values of dialogue, moderation and coexistence in the educational field upon the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. For his part, Director General of the Arab Bureau of Education asserted on Bahrain's role in aiding the success of the Bureau's efforts, noting that the Ministry suggested a number of topics that were con covered in the training programs which were circulated to the rest of the countries. The Minister of Education and the Director General awarded the two Bahraini schools who won six awards in the Arab Bureau's friendly 
initiative competition. He praised the honorable achievements of the Bahraini teachers, which fall under the various achievements obtained by the kingdom. President of Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities, Sheikh Amey bint Mohammed Al Khalifa, participated in Al Lamburda Festival held at the 421st exhibition in Abu Dhabi in the presence of the UAE Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Interior, Sheikh Saif bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the Minister of Culture and Knowledge Development, Noura Al Kabi. Sheikh Amey stated that the UAE cultural arena is witnessing positive and effective action. Pra praising uh, the festival, which is re a reflection of their efforts towards promoting Islamic art identity. Sheikh Amey also spoke at the inaugural session about future, the future of Islamic art and the role of the private sector in supporting cultural projects. <laughs>